All right, so we have a lot of participants here um, and we can formally start. Uh, hello and good morning to everyone present here. Uh, we have a very insightful session planned for you all today. Um, wait, let me let me share the slides. Yeah, so thank you for joining us for the webinar. Um, the title for today's discussion is Data Warehouse Automation, The Secret to Faster Analytics. Um, let me quickly go through the introductions first before we um, delve right into the product demonstration. My name is Haris Azim and I'm the product marketing lead over here at Estera. Uh, then we have Shahriyar Ali here with us who is the project manager for Estera's data warehouse automation tool. He has vast experience in developing scalable data management solutions and architectures for enterprises from various industries. Okay, so um, let me share the agenda for today's discussion. All right. Um, so today uh, for, we'll be starting off with a, a brief overview of Estera software's data warehouse automation tool, which is the Estera DW Builder. And then we'd be heading right into the product demonstration where we'd be showing how to build a data warehouse in under 40 minutes. Um, under the demonstration, we'd be covering how to you know, integrate source data from uh, disparate uh, data sources. We'd also be talking about the automated creation and deployment of dimensional models, which is something uh, that the Stereo DW Builder allows you to do. Uh, we'd also be uh, talking about creating automated ETL pipelines uh, to populate the data warehouse, and then or orchestrating and automating the whole process to maintain a self-sustaining data warehouse. Uh, and then finally, using the data warehouse for faster analytics. In case you guys have any questions uh, during the demonstration or generally any questions, uh, ask them during the Q&A session, which we would be having at the end. All right, so... Uh, Estera software is um, it's a rapidly growing provider of um, you know enterprise ready data management solutions. We aim to bridge the gap between data and uh, reliable insights by designing easy to use intuitive data solutions that are used by organizations uh, ranging from SMEs to Fortune 500 companies. Uh, in today's webinar, we'd be walking you through our data warehouse automation tool, the Estera DW Builder. It is a unified data warehouse automation platform that is used for designing, uh, developing, and maintaining an entire data warehouse architecture. The Estera DW Builder offers end-to-end -end process automation and a code-free environment to eliminate the need for writing you know, uh, hefty code-based scripts for uh, developing a data warehouse. As you can see uh, in this image as well, uh, that this is what the normal process for the data warehouse automation look like with us. You have uh, reams of data coming in from multiple uh, disparate data sources. Then within the DW Builder, you can create a staging layer or source models, which can be then reverse engineered automatically to create complex data models, such as dimension models or data wall models. Um, you can then deploy your models in destination warehouses for consumption, in desired you know, destination warehouses for consumption with just a click of a button. The DW Builder self-generates all the code required here. Uh, finally, you populate the data warehouse in a real time using automated ETL pipelines and then consume its data in BI and reporting uh, tools. Now, uh, without further ado, let's head right into the demonstration. In case you have any questions, just to reiterate, please type uh, them in the chat box towards the end of the discussion when we would be opening the floor for uh, Q&A session. Uh, over to you, Sherry R. Sherry, are you on? You are on mute. Sorry. Sorry, I wasted a few words. Um, so yeah, as you uh, as you mentioned that the world is moving towards more data driven and analytic driven analytics driven systems, and they are more inclined towards building data warehouses than ever. So in as the data grows, the problems are also growing. The problems of maintaining data warehouses and developing data warehouses are also growing over the time. And most often, I see the budgets of the data building a data warehouse often exceed the estimated cost, and that's mainly because of you know um, lack of planning or you know putting more time and efforts than you know than they were estimated before. So that majorly uh, caused the data warehouse project to fail. So the 
let's have a look at the fundamentals of building a data warehouse first before we understand how it can you know it can fail or it can succeed so mostly the 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 slide you see on the screen these are the basic most fundamental steps of building any data warehouse you first of all you need to integrate you need to analyze and um, integrate with your data sources and then once you have integrated with your data sources you need to transform the data clean the data data massage the data and then feed it into a staging area and from where the staging area or an ods and from the staging area and or the ods you can then feed the data to your data warehouse and then you feed the data into your analytics or bi tools so the companies or the uh, data teams are mostly spending their time on the either the etl part or the modeling part these are the two uh, fundamental steps of building a data warehouse and they are very important um but mostly you know uh, people have either they are mostly inclined towards you know writing scripts long scripts which are hard to maintain and you know over the time they lose track of everything like they the scripts grow so long large and hard to maintain that they need to hire more and more resources to maintain the those scripts on the other hand some people spend more time on figuring out the business requirements and then building dimensional models out out of the requirements and the data so a lot of time is spent on building dimensional model perfect dimensional models so we are going to see how Astra can help people move uh, along these steps in a faster way so i am going to now share my screen let me know how it's when it's visible Um, yes, uh, yes, it's visible now. All right, so let's start with the product introduction itself. So this is Estra Data Warehouse Builder. This is the star page on you, which you can see, and the tool is um, the tool basically helps the users to build data warehouses and their ETL pipelines in a much faster way. And the three main components used for those uh, for the this automation and uh, this agility is. Uh, the first, the, firstly, the data data flows, then workflows, and then data models. We are going to have a look at each of them one by one, and we are also going to see how they help in uh, you know uh, creating a data warehouse for us. So let's start by creating a first data model. So I've already created a data model inside my project, and by the way, this is the project explorer which you can see I have, I have created a project inside it, inside which I have this data model one. So this is a how a data model looks like. It's blank right now. On the left hand side, you can see its toolbox. Uh, since it's uh, blank right now, it doesn't have anything. So I know for this demo that I am going to use two data sources. One is a database and the other is a CRM system. Uh, I'm going to access the database from this data model and the CRM system using the API connector. So without further ado, let's connect to our Data, data source. So I am clicking on the reverse engineer icon, and in this reverse engineer icon, I can point to my source database. By the way, I do have options to connect to any database. For now, I have a SQL database, and I'm going to press OK. Now it lists down all the tables present inside the database. I can select the tables which I want. I can select all of them or the or specific ones. And once I'm done, I'll just press OK. So it's now going into the database itself and reading the metadata from the database. It will reverse engineer all the foreign keys, the relationships between the entities, the indexes, the fields, everything that's present inside the database, it will now be reverse engineered. So this is how it looks once it has done reverse engineering. I can see how the entities are related to each other, the foreign keys basically, I can see how invoices and orders are related to each other. And I can also see how other entries are related to each other. If I go inside the entity, I can see the layout, its physical name, its schema, and its entity type is general at the moment. And I can see the fields and the properties for fields as well, such as its length and its other physical properties. So this is the first step. The first step was to you know reverse engineering your source database. And actually, let me go move towards the data flow now to 
have a look at our second data source. So our second data source is an API which I have already connected to. So now using the tool, you can connect to any API, whether your data is on Google Cloud or any other cloud or you know any other software that provides access via APIs, you can connect to it. I already have a I have already built a connection to my API and it's present here in my REST API browser. You could do the same. Now building connection is easy. You just need to provide your base URL and this select the security type. It can be OAuth, it can be API key, basic authentication, and based on the security type you have selected, it will give you a menu. Uh, it will give you, you know, the fields to put your information in. <clears throat> now moving back to the data flow, since I've already connected to my source database, source API, I'm just going to drag and drop this API to my designer. Now, this is how it looks right now. It does contain data inside it but right now it's just a connection. I want to have a look at its data. So if I just right click on it and show, click on preview output, it will go and fetch the data for, for me from the API. Now, currently this data is in raw format and no fields in it. If I click on raw bytes, it will just display the raw bytes and you know the content is in JSON format right now but I want to convert it into into a, uh, a proper tabular format. So I'll just go inside this source connection. And from this screen, I'll say generate layout by running request. So it will run the request and it will convert the JSON layout into a, a table format. Once done, I can press OK and I can preview it again. Okay, now let's see how it looks. expand it okay so here's how it looks right now uh, you can see all the fields which were present inside the CRM are now in my data preview window and this is not actually um, this is the real data but it's not transforming it at the moment it's just getting it and displaying it here now what I want to do is I want to transform this data and then float it into my destination also, as I mentioned that I have another source as well, which I showed earlier in the data model. I want to join these two sources and then feed it into my staging area. So a brief overview of this staging area, which I created, this is similar to my source model, which I showed earlier, but this has more fields. Now, the, the problem was that my source database did not have all the fields such as uh, if you have a look at this, uh, <clears throat> let me go back to my source database first. So for customers, it only had the fields such as its ID and its name, but it did not have another all, all the other information which I wanted. And that information was stored in my API. That's why I had to integrate both the sources to build my <clears throat> build my dimensional model. And I built a staging area in which I created the fields which I wanted. So for example, if I go to this main layout and have a look at this customers table in my staging area, it has more sources than my source database, more fields than my source database. Moving back to my data flow. <clears throat> this was the data flow. Okay, now I need to join both the sources the API source and the database source and then feed data into my staging area. So for that, I'll need to drag and drop a database table source. And by the way, I can use any other source as well, Excel source or you know, file system source or PDF sources even. But for now, I'm going to use a database table source because it's a database. And once inside, I am going to make a connection with my source database, press next. And then I'm going to connect to my source table. Uh, I'm sorry for that. I need to set my themes on do not disturb. Just give me a moment. Okay. Yeah. Back to the demo. So I'll just select my table from here and it will now list down all the fields for me, which are present inside my source database. So 
I'm moving back to the data flow which I already created just to save us some time. This is how it looked. And this is again the same API and the same data stable. And now what I did here is I actually joined the two sources together using a join transformation. And that's a simple process. I can do it again in just a few moments. Uh, I can go to this transformation section inside the toolbox where I have multiple transformations. So it has more than 400 built in transformations and you don't have to write code to use them. You can just simply drag and drop a transformation and you know apply it to any source and destination. So for example, I want to join this API source with this database source. I can simply drag and drop this join transformation and then I can make, make the mappings from my API source to my and also map some the, some of the fields from my uh, database source customer id customer name these are important ones let me actually bring it down here customer id for joining the fields and cu customer name as well <clears throat> By the way, is my screen properly visible to you guys? It is. It is. Here you are. Okay. And customer name from as well from the database. Now, once I have mapped the fields, I need to select the join keys. Now, in this case, I know customer ID is the field which I need to use to join the two sources. I press next. I have different join types here, inner, left outer, right outer, full outer. I'm going to leave it as inner join. I'm going to sort left and sort right input. And for the left table, I'm going to select customer ID. And as the right field, I'm going to select uh, the other field that's customer ID underscore one that's coming in from the database source. Done. And now I can preview my output right from here. Right, so it's fetching the data from the API and the database. Okay, so here are my records, and <clears throat> they are now joined together. But I also want to perform some data cleans, data cleaning before I actually feed it into my transformation to my staging area. Uh, for example, I can see that credit limit is blank for some of the records, and maybe some of the records also do not have proper um, proper case in the customer name. So I want to clean clean my data before actually fitting into my staging area. And I can do that by simply right clicking here, transform it here, and then selecting a data cleans transformation right from this menu. Okay. Now all the fields are mapped. If I go inside my data cleans transformation, I can see the fields are now mapped and press next. I can, you know, th th this is the menu of data clean transformation. I can just select remove all white spaces. Sorry, not all white spaces. Leading and trailing white spaces, tabs and line breaks if there are any. Duplicate white spaces and, you know, I could also remove letters, digits, but I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to replace null numerics with zeros and null strings with blanks. If I wanted to re remove replace any specific characters, I, I could do that by you know, selecting this option, it will search for it and replace it. <clears throat> All right, before moving forward, I also want to change the data type of credit limit to real, because it's not a string value, it's a real value. And now if I preview the output of my data cleans transformation, I can see, let's wait for it. I can see that now the credit limit where it was blank is now replaced with zero and not all of the values were blank. Some actually had values in them. Okay. Now the last step is to map, map this data, which is clean to my <clears throat> staging area. And I'm going to do that by just making the mappings. And again, this is a simple database destination, which you can drag and drop from this 
section under the toolbox. Again, your destination can be a database, it can be file, email destination as well, or PDF destination. In this case, it's a staging database, so I'm going to map it to my staging database. And once I click on run, it's going to perform all these actions and feed data actually into my staging area. Right. <clears throat> you can see the job progress where it's telling all the uh, steps it's taking. It's a detailed job progress. If the job had failed, then I could also track where it actually failed. Similarly, I have built flows to get data from my source to staging for all the tables, city, stock items, customer, all the tables which I wanted and employees. And once this step is done, the next step is to actually build a dimensional model using my staging database, using the data I have now. So <clears throat> this is my staging database, as we saw earlier, and now I want to build a dimensional model on top of it. Now, <clears throat> there are two ways to do it. Either I can go ahead and manually start changing the table types. For example, I know that this employee table is going to be a dimension in my data warehouse. So I can just go ahead and change this entity type to dimension from general, just like that. And then I can assign uh, a raw identifier to this table. It's as simple as that. For example, I need to use effective and expiration range. It's okay. And I can also add surrogate key in my dimension. Okay, and it will add a new field. Here it is. So either I can do this or I can use the automation feature of a Stera DWB to build a dimensional model using this staging database for me. And to do that, I'm going to go to this menu, data model, and I'm going to select build dimensional model. So in this visit, I need to select my fact tables, um, invoices, invoice lines, and order lines and orders. These are going to be my fact tables, and the rest are going to be my dimensions. I can also uh, select which row identifier do I want to add in my dimensions. In this case, I'm going to leave it as default current record designator, which is zero for expired records and one for active records. And I'm also going to add surrogate keys in my fact and dimensions, and I'm also going to add date dimensions in my dimension model, excuse me. <clears throat> and I also want to extract only the numeric fields for my fact tables. Once I press okay, it will convert this staging area to a dimensional model. Now you can see the colors are changing. It's processing, it's going through all the entities and it's identifying of which tables are going to be dimension, which are going to be my fact tables. And it's also trying to, you know, create a star schema uh, rather than, you know, uh, keep it in, keeping it as it was. So I can see that now I have two star schemas, two fact tables and some dimensions around them. And none of the uh, fact tables are related to each other. None of the dimensions are also related to each other. Actually, there is a dimension which is related to each other. I can break this relationship and I can denormalize it further if I want to. Let me break it in the center. Okay. So I can make further changes such as I can rename the tables. I can rename this order lines table to order lines fact table. And I can also re start renaming the, uh, the the dimensions. I can also add some more fields inside the my dimension, some calculated fields, and you know other other attributes. But as of now, I'm going to leave it as is because it looks good. Uh, it, it looks a good star schema. And I'm going to go inside my dimension. And inside my dimension, the uh, next step is to assign STD slowly changing dimensions. So. There are several options for switching dimension. There is SCD one, two, three, and six available inside Estrella EWB. And I can use SCD two for some fields and some, and I'm going to use SCD one for some. And the if I leave it as is, it's going to act as SCD zero. That's no change. It's, it's only going to insert it once and then never record history for that, that field. 
And SC1 means that if I want to replace my value every time it gets changed and SCD2 is actually tracking history. So I can similarly configure my other dimensions and once I have configured my dimensions, it should look something like this. Now this is a more cleaner version of that dimension model because I have renamed some tables here. You, as you can see, I have renamed order lines to orders and you know invoice lines to sale table. The date dimension is still there. It added it automatically and I can see the relationships as well. And okay, now it's almost done. If I have a look at each of these star schemas individually, then this is how it looks like. This is my orders fact and some dimensions around it. And this is my sales fact and some dimensions around it. Once I have done configuring all the dimensions and fact tables, the next step to is to forward engineer this entire design to the database. So this structure will be created in the database. And again, I can simply change the connection if I want to. I can point to any other database. Uh, in this case, I'm pointing to demo DWH database, uh, which is on my local machine right now. I can do that and I can simply apply either DDL or apply the diff script. So apply DDL will, uh, will create a script and run it on the database that creates all this structure in the database and apply diff will actually calculate the difference or the uh, the changes between the database and, uh, uh, database and the data model and will forward engineer only the differences. So I can do that and apply diff or apply DDL and right now it's already forward engineered. Once I've done that, I can verify my model for you know, uh, to de before deployment to verify if everything is configured properly or not. So <clears throat> the verification option is kind of uh, a helper, a great helper in cases where I'm not actually aware of the uh, dimension warning. So it helps the user, it, it gives the warning that if, if you have configured some something not properly, if you have not configured something properly, it will give you an error that, hey, you need to uh, you need to recheck that. And if there are warnings such as, uh, in this case, it's giving me a warning that inside the employee table uh, for field marks at the slow SCD2, SCD3, or SCD6, property allow null cannot be true. Now this is a warning, I can ignore it, but the best practice is not to ignore these warnings. Once I have done configuring it and I have verified the data model, the last step is to deploy, not the last, the second last step is actually to deploy this data model to the SDR integration server. It will ask me for a name which I want to give it and it will deploy it on my SDR server. Now <clears throat> I have already deployed, deployed it and now I'm going to move towards my last step that's actually reading the data from my source, sorry, my staging, and feeding it into my dimensional model. Component, and let's actually add a new data flow here to show you how easy that process is. So this data flow is now added. I need to read data from my staging database, which I can just do by dragging and dropping a database table source, connecting to my so staging database. What's next? Selecting my table, which I want to read data from. For example, let's start with employee dimension. What's next? It's okay. And now I want to load into my employee dimension. Let's rename it to manage table name. I'm going to expand this data warehousing section and I am going to drag and drop a dimension loader object. Now, <clears throat> this dimension loader object is kind of useful. Let's see how it helps me loading data into my uh, data model. So, I'm going to point to my data mart. It's next, and select my dimension that is employee dimension. It's next. I can see all the layout which I configured, the dimension ro the dimension roles which I configured. It's not editable from here because it was only editable in the data model. I have deployed it. Now it's not editable at the moment. Press OK and just make the mappings. And we are done. Now I'm going to execute this job and let's have a look at what it does. So it's going to read all the information from my staging database 
it's going to read all the data and it's going to write into my dimension model <clears throat> now writing into dimensions is as easy as it looks like right now but it can be hard if you are doing it manually because if we look at the underlying SQL script we can see that there is a lot of operations we need to perform before loading data into our dimensions. We need to check for their slowly changing dimensions as series. We need to identify which records are going to be expired and all the other conditions. So this is the SQL script that it generate that the, that the tool has generated automatically for me. I don't have to run it or do anything here. This is equivalent of the data flow which we just which we just saw. So this data flow, these two boxes are equal to the SQL script, which is like more almost 200 lines of code. So I don't have to write the SQL code at, at all. I can just simply close it. And in a similar way, I can create data flows to load data from my staging to my dimensions uh, for all the dimensions. The last step is to load data into my fact table. Now to load data into my fact table, we know that when we were building our that the dimensional model, we uh, joined two tables together, uh, which was invoice lines and invoices, and made, made it one table. But in the source, there are still two different tables, and now I need to read data from two different tables and join them, just like we saw earlier in our staging data flow. We need to read data from two different sources and join them and then feed it into our fact table. <clears throat> But thankfully, we don't have to do that because data model query is here to help us. I can just simply drag and drop data model query object, select it, and point it to my staging area. And I can select the table which I want to use as my root element. So for example, invoice lines. And once I've selected invoice lines, it automatically joined with all the connected tables. So it joined invoice lines with the stock item, invoices table, and further, I can also see that invoice is, is also joined with uh, employee, customer, and other tables. And I can go as down, as deep down, deep down in the hierarchy as I want to, and I can make, start making the mapping. So I don't have to write any query to join these tables. I can simply uh, just select the fields from the tables which I want to, just like I have done here. So these fields are mapped automatically. As you can see, some fields are coming from invoices, the root element, uh, invoice lines, and then invoices, and then some fields are even coming from the customer's table. So again, I don't have to write join, uh, the queries to join this table. I can simply make the mappings, and I can exit data flow. Now again, as many of us uh, might know that loading data into our fact tables can also be uh, a big process because you need to perform dimension lookups and you need to uh, identify all the transaction dates and everything. You need to get the surrogate keys from the dimensions. But thankfully, in the Serra Data Warehouse Builder, you don't have to do any of that because it's automatically going to uh, create a data flow or a SQL script. Uh, not this one. So this is how uh, it looks like. It will look like if you don't have the automation here. So you can see that there are a number of transformations, a number of lookups have to be performed, not just reading data from the source, but after reading data from your source, you need to perform a number of lookups. It's a small because I have zoomed out a little bit. You can zoom in if you want. And then after performing all the lookups, then you need to feed it into your fact table. But we don't have to do this right now because this data flow, these four boxes were equivalent of all that, uh, all that mess. And we can also have a look at the SQL script, which it created behind the scenes. And we don't have to, again, go into inside the SQL script at all because it automatically executed all of it. You can see this is like 100 lines of code, again, for just one fact table. So I don't have to do that. I can simply use a uh, fact table order and a data model query to do all of that. And inside data model query, we saw that we joined multiple tables. If we go back inside the SQL script, we can also see that it actually joined those tables inside the database without me having to write the code for it. 
So <clears throat> once you have created all the flows, the data models, the last step is to, of, of course, orchestrate it. And we can do that by using workflows. So workflows are like um, flow charts where you can decide the uh, the flow of your pipeline. So for example, you can decide that which tables you need to load first and then you know which ones after and then you have a complete section for workflow task where you can take decisions if something has returned yes then you can move forward you can even send emails to administrator if some if a job fails here and let me create a workflow first so for example in this case i want to run all my dimensions and once my dimensions are completed have run successfully only then run my fact table loader and even after that i can take a decision if it has run successfully then you know i can either uh, take another decision or run a program run another data flow or you know even send some emails to you know the system administrator to confirm that this job is completed successfully this is the last step of creating your data pipelines to load data into your uh, data warehouse. I already have one here. Now this one is a combined workflow. Uh, it basically has two parts, staging workflow and data marts. Staging is also automated. So you can load data from your sources to your staging area using this workflow automatically. And the combined one will process all of these at once. Then if you want to automate all of this process, you can go to job schedules and create different schedules for entirely uh, for running it automatically. So for example, if I uh, create a new job, I can also select the frequency, the frequency options such as once, daily, weekly, or hourly. You can, you know, uh, based on the frequency I select, the context menu below here changes. I can select the frequency, whichever frequency I want. I can give this job a name. For example demo and I can select which job it needs to run I'm going to copy the path of the workflow we created I'm going to point it here if I save it now okay this job is now set to run on 4 fun 2023 yeah whichever whatever that date is it's telling me when it it draws run it's, it's last run is empty right now because it has run run right now and the schedule in you know in pure English so you can export it as well and send it to your system administrators and then of course you can build dashboards on top of your data warehouses you create by directly integrating with Astera integration server using O data either or you can you know directly connect to your SQL database as well to get data from the data warehouse that concludes my presentation I hope I am on time Over to you, Harris. You are, you are, here you are. Uh, thank you so much. Wait, uh, you'll have to stop the screen sharing. All right, all right. Um, thank you, Sherry, um, once again uh, for enlightening us with this product demonstration. Um, you know, with, with that kind of um, automation with the Stara DW Builder, it's quite clear how you know enterprises can cut down the data warehouse design, the entire data warehouse design and development life cycle by nearly 80%. Um, that's what the product is capable of doing. Uh, the savings that one can make in terms of you know the time and uh, technical resources is truly um, empowering for uh, modern data-driven organizations. Having said that, I'm sure that our uh, viewers have questions in mind, so let's open the floor for Q and A. Uh, please type your questions in the Q and A section, uh, which is the chat actually, and uh, we'll answer them right away. So let's see if we have any questions. All right, 
Okay, so here you are. We have a question in the Q&A section. Um, does Estera Data Warehouse Builder only support dimensional modeling, or do you also support other modeling techniques such as uh, the Data oh. Vault? <clears throat> Yeah, so the, the the modeling technique totally depends on your requirements, and there are people who prefer Kimball style modeling, and there are some people who prefer uh, Inman style modeling, and that there is Data Vault as well. It's a it's an emerging technique used in dimensional uh, used in uh, de building data warehouses. So the tool supports all of them, and which type of model you want to build depends on to uh, totally depends on your business needs. So I hope that answers your question. In short, in short, yeah, it does support other modeling techniques such as data walls and uh, in one style modeling as well. 3NF modeling. All right, uh, that makes sense. There was an older question, uh, but I'm sure that we have missed that part. Uh, mm -hmm. So someone asked that, what does that blue symbol do? I mean, there are a lot of blue symbols in the product demonstration, so I'm not sure which one this one is referring to, but um, the blue symbol. If, yeah, so but it, but the person who asked this question, like if you want to, um, you know, clarify it a bit more and point it to any specific feature, we could uh, definitely answer that. Yeah. Uh, there's another question. Uh, do you have any tools that I can use to design data models? My requirements are in the form of KPIs from Workday. Can you help me design a model that will allow me to build a specific KPI, a key performance indicator? So yeah, the tool supports modeling. You can, as you, as I showed you, the, that you can create data models out. Uh, out of your source data, whatever type of data you are getting, whether it's from you know an API source or a database source, you can just simply fetch your data and put it inside the data model, and then you can you know further enhance the data model. <clears throat> All right, um, we have another question. Uh, oh, actually, we don't. This is just a comment. I think I see a question in my chat that's from Tassin. How to execute? I mean, I mean, from which tool can you repeat that? Uh, by exec, do you want to see how to execute a job? Tassin, if you are still there, can you clarify further? Are you are you talking about executing a data flow? There is a button on top of each data flow. If I, I can I can share my screen again and I can show you that this is the button right here, right there, which starts the data flow. If you want to run it manually, but if you want it to run automatically, then you can schedule it from this scheduler as I showed in the last step. So in this case, it will run automatically. I hope that clarifies your question. All right, uh, there is another question here. Um, you mentioned the product can auto discover relationships. I presume that requires specific information uh, about PK, FK relationships. Uh, but can that relationship model be enhanced to refine manually as well in case the requirements are not detectable from the source? Definitely. So there are options to build the relationships. You can you you have option to build even virtual relationships. The virtual relationships are the, are the one which, uh, which are not forward engineered to the database. You can build virtual relationship, or you if you want, you can build uh, physical relationships in the data model designer itself. So there are options to that, all of that. And then there, uh, what I what I actually mentioned is that when I was reverse engineering from my source database, it went inside my source database and it um, reverse engineered from the source database, the metadata, the foreign keys which were already present inside my source database. But in, but there are cases where you don't have any relationships in your source database. I have seen that in the past, a lot of time actually, you don't have uh, relationships in your source database. So in that case, you can simply reverse engineer the data, the, uh, the entities, and then you have an option to infer relationships using field names. You can either use that, or you do, you have an option, and you have another option to you know build relationships manually. There is a relationship builder icon, and you can just you know select one entity and the other, and 
it will create a relationship between those entities, a foreign key. And then if you want to forward engineer it back to the database, you could. If you want to keep it virtual, you can create virtual relationships which will never be forward engineered to your database and will not harm your source database. I hope that answers your question. Amazing, amazing. We'll just take one last question. Um, it just popped up here. Uh, so the question is data integrity and correctness have always been issues for data warehousing. How does your tool ensure the correctness of data over time and not just at the time of building it? So if you are using the tool itself to load data into your data warehouses, then it makes sure that it does not uh, violate the rules of data warehousing. Most of the time, when the tool is uh, feeding data in your data warehouse, it, it keeps checks of all the things that are present inside the data warehouse. It feeds this properly. It updates the raw identifiers properly. It up updates the surrogate keys properly and everything that's required for data warehouse. But there are cases I've seen in the past that you know there are some other feeds as well that are feeding data into your data warehouse. In that case, you can use an option that's called data integrity and you know a data warehouse verifier which can simply go inside your database and check if your data is you know uh, it's consistent the data warehouse is still uh, you know in, in a good shape or not it can check your health it can check the health of your data warehouse for example it can have a look at the dimension and see if there are you know multiple active records for the same employee for example you know all the all the similar type of check the checks you need to perform on the data itself the tool automates it all you don't have to manually go inside and you know verify the health of your data warehouse i hope that answers your question <clears throat> i hope it does um well thank you sherry for answering those questions uh that was some great and insightful discussion for anyone who still wants to find more about the topic you can go to estera.com resources and we have some great white papers and blogs on data warehousing and automation and if you miss something and want to you know re-watch uh the webinar we'll be posting a full webinar on estera.com webinars uh feel free to get in uh, touch with us anytime you want you will find the content contact information on estera.com slash contact. On top of that, we will be sharing the recording for the webinar and a free 14 day product trial via email in case you want to take the product out for a spin. Thank you so much to everyone who attended. We hope to see you again. We have some great events lined up in the future as well. Have a great day. Thank you, Aris. Thank you everyone for attending. See you all then.